I'm in the car. I'm getting ready to head out to the nursery to pick up some uh, plants that I've ordered. And I paid for them online with a credit card and, uh, you know, all this contactless stuff and everything. And then I realized that, you know, a credit card isn't really money. Well, what is money? And then I realized that this, you know, free shake coupon from a burger joint, well, it's kind of money too. How is that even possible? Well, this is hedgery. I'm here outside the world famous Round Rock Donuts, um, kind of to, to make a little bit of a point, because of course, if what you really want is a donut, there's nothing that'll replace a donut. But when it comes to currency, there are really three types that we need to keep in mind. Uh, the first of these is specie, which means an actual like physical currency minted out of some valuable material like gold or silver. Then there are backed currencies like the old gold and silver certificates that you could exchange for specie on demand, uh, at a bank anyway. And then there's fiat currency, which the internet loves to hate because it's backed by nothing more than the government saying, hey, this is money, it's valuable. Well, here's the deal. All money, all money is really nothing more than a social convention. Don't I know that gold is valuable? Well, yes and no. Uh, it is certainly very rare and it does have a uh, utilitarian value but so does bismuth, and bismuth is only about twice as common as gold, so it's still very rare, which uh, means that it should sell for about half as much as gold. But gold sells for about a thousand times what bismuth does. I could buy 10 or 20, but a thousand, that is entirely social convention. That's because we humans have agreed that gold is valuable. I know, I know. You were taught in school that money is a way of storing value. But think about it. You need another person to trade with you in order to turn money into value. It's not like a box of donuts where you just have donuts. I think perhaps the best explanation for why money is not the storage of value came from the Abnaki filmmaker and activist Alanis Obamsawin, who said, Your people are driven by a terrible sense of deficiency. When the last tree is cut, the last fish is caught, and the last river is polluted. When to breathe the air is sickening, you will realize too late that wealth is not in bank accounts and that you can't eat money. So if money doesn't actually store value, what does it even do? The easiest way to understand that is to know where new money comes from. You see, new money is created by the fractional reserve banking method. That is, whenever you borrow money, 90%, nine zero percent of that money is new money that's backed by just your IOU. That's right. Money is not a store of value. It's a store of the social obligation to provide value. Knowing that arms us to use our creativity to solve problems that might uh, be challenging if the only way to get what we need is through money. That's right. As hedgers, money does not need to be a roadblock. That's some pretty interesting stuff, isn't it? Well, before we go, I want to leave you with a question that has no single right answer.
For years, historians and economists have told us that money was a logical outgrowth of barter that people used to do inside their communities. And yet anthropologists have shown that inside close circles of sharing in traditional villages and the like, most people operate on what's called a gift economy. Barter was something that was really reserved for people outside of the circle of trust or on the fringes of it. Given that, what's a way that you could think of to symbolize these social relationships, to have the benefits of money, but ground it in healthy societies? Think it over and share with us down in the comments. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, you are hedgering.